Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be speaking about virtual networking. I'll be doing a networking overview, talking about different platforms that you can use, and also giving some tips. So networking basics for virtual networking. Do your research. So before you go out and apply and talk to recruiters, definitely still look at companies' descriptions of their positions and also look into the company itself. Really coming prepared to interviews is very important. Be prepared, just like I said, in general, make sure that your resume is updated, make sure that your platforms that you're using are updated. The last thing that you want is for a recruiter to reach out and say, can I interview you tomorrow? And then you not have everything updated to give to them. So just becoming um, prepared beforehand. And then following up, just because the networking isn't in person doesn't mean that you shouldn't still follow up. I would say Virtually following up is just as important. So if you do an interview, if you see a job posting and talk to somebody or talk to someone on the phone, making sure just to still send a quick email, thanking them for their time and thanking them for reaching out. How to virtually network. So want to talk about some platforms that you can use to your advantage during this time. Handshake, I'll be touching a lot on Handshake. I think that this resource is so great for students to really look for different positions. LinkedIn, of course, is a great resource as well. Also wanting to talk about reaching out to peers, whether that be friends, classmates, coworkers, anything like that, and then professional organizations. So what is Handshake? I'm sure that most of you are aware of Handshake, but wanna give an overview of it. This is a good resource to really learn about companies that are hiring. You can create a profile that is searchable by recruiters. I would highly recommend creating a profile in Handshake if you don't have one already. This is where I would say you would get reached out to a lot just by the information that you have on there. You can register for virtual career fairs. I've actually seen a lot that are going on that not only Handshake is putting on, but also you know school specific as well. So making sure to register for those. And then you can also apply to open positions on there. Just a couple more tips and, and tricks on Handshake. So your profile should be more than just your name. I know that the first step is creating a profile, but really it's your job to put in all of your skills into there and your experience so that recruiters do reach out to you. It's hard for someone just to reach out just based off of your name and your school. So you really want to enter in all of your skills, whether that be if you've used Microsoft Excel a lot or other technologies, make sure to put student organizations on there, make sure to put all of your past positions that you've held. So any internships, any part-time work, you know, anything that you really feel, feel like you have gained valuable knowledge and skills from, make sure to put it on there. You can even use your profile information to build your resume. If you haven't had a resume yet, it's actually a good tool to, you know, put everything in your profile and then you can build the resume from that. And then number two, so following, you know, your favorite companies or favorite jobs, you can actually click the follow button at the top of every job or posting that you see. And then anytime that you want to go back and look at it, you can actually use a filter option that says show followed only. So this is a good way to just track different positions that you might be interested in. And then if you want to go research the company a little more, look if that actually is a really good fit for you, then you can go on there and filter by that. And then the third is the search function. So you can use different search criteria or you can use the same search criteria for jobs and internships. So say you're, look, you're looking for the same types of thing over and over, you know, a finance position in Dallas. And so you want to save that search every time you do it. You can actually just click the plus button next to the word save searches. And this um, saves all of those search filters so that you don't need to type that in every time. I know when you're getting really specific and you're using different filters, you know, every time it might be annoying to just keep entering in those. So this really helps save time when you are out there searching. And then Career Center. So there's a lot of Career Center activity all in one place on there. You can look at, you can go to the events section that shows all the 
information sessions, you know, virtual career fairs, anything, anything like that, that is happening is there. And then of course you can reach out to your career center from there. So it's a really good tool. And then of course the fifth, um, I always, I did leave on the on-campus interviews. I know that that isn't happening right now. Um, and most interviews are being done virtually or over the phone. And so that might not be as applicable currently, but Handshake is a good way to go in and actually apply to interviews so that you can be added to that schedule. So that will be, you know, definitely important moving forward, you know, once we're back to interviewing in person. And then just some more profile creation tips from a recruiter on Handshake. You can actually change your profile from public to private. Say that you have a position already and you're not really looking or you don't want to be reached out to by recruiters, you can put that on private. You can even do that if you're still looking for a position, but you don't want a lot of people to reach out to you, but feel free. Um, definitely put it on public though. If you are wanting people to reach out to you and you do want to know what's out there, this is such a good networking tool because a lot of us recruiters, I send so many campaigns of positions. So if you're not as familiar with what that is, you know, we can go in and send our positions to a lot of students, um, you know, in a certain area or from a certain school or that have a certain major. And so it's a really good tool for us. I mean, I message almost every single position out on Handshake. And so it's, you know, a really good way for you to network on there. There's the messaging function that you can talk to the recruiter on directly. And so this is a really good way to network. You know, once you reach out to, you can just message that recruiter back and ask for more information or, you know, find the job that they are campaigning out to apply to um, and ask if you need to do anything for next steps. So it really is, you know, a good place to network. Make sure to add your GPA and resume on there. It's really important, you know, sometimes if you don't have your GPA on there, recruiters or people could assume that it's lower than it actually is, or, you know, they might not reach out to you because of that. Same with your resume. If your profile isn't up to date with all of your current information, make sure to attach that resume as well, just because it'll be an easy way for them to actually directly email you um, and, or call you if they need to. Location preference. I actually highly recommend selecting cities that you're interested in. Some of our campaigns or messages that go out will go out if you only are interested in Houston, for instance. And so you may be missed in that search or that messaging if you aren't putting in locations. I actually recently hired somebody that went to Arizona State for a position in Denver because he happened to put that he was interested in Denver in his location preference. And so it is really important to put that. I would say, especially if you're wanting to move out of state, that is really crucial because it's hard to say, okay, someone from Dallas wants to move to New York. Maybe a recruiter isn't going to look or consider because they don't think that you would actually move there. So actually putting a preference on there so it solidifies it is very helpful. So if you're, you can select up to five cities, you can actually select more than that. If you're not interested in moving to five cities, then just put the two or three that you are interested in. And then adding work and university activities. So making sure every semester to go in there and update this is very important. And this is just six ways to customize your job search on Handshake. So you can look by keyword. If you're interested in just one specific industry or maybe just two specific industries, putting that in there is very helpful. It's going to create um, a quicker search for you. Job function, job type, career community, and employer. So these are all different ways to search it. Um, employer, of course, if you're looking for specific employers that you want to apply to, that's a good way to do it. Some things that I didn't mention yet on Handshake that I think are important, especially for the networking aspect, is that you are able to go in there and look at different reviews. I know, for instance, I'm from Ryan LLC, and we have interns review our review the company on Handshake. So it's a really good resource if you want to go and check out reviews on there or just learn more about companies, they actually have company profiles on there that you can read more about and really do your research before you do apply. 
But like I mentioned, I think Handshake is a really important resource. It's probably the top of my list for college students because it's specifically geared towards recent graduates, current students, interns specifically. So this is really, I think, the number one resource to look at. You're going to be able to message recruiters on there, apply to jobs directly, really find out what is open on Handshake. LinkedIn. So of course, LinkedIn is such a good resource for networking. You can connect with a lot of people on there, people that you know, people that you're interested in connecting with because of maybe their um, employer and you're wanting to find out more. I mean, it's just, it's a really good resource. What to put on there, make sure to have a professional picture. You do have 120 characters to use. So put those headlines in there. If you're interested in an internship, make sure to put that. If you're interested in an internship in a specific location, make, make sure to, or if you're interested in a full-time position, make sure to do that as well. Um, I actually recently had just hired somebody that actually goes to school in Ohio, but only wanted to work in Houston. And we happen to have a lot of different Houston opportunities open and she applied to the position and then added me on LinkedIn because she saw I was the recruiter. And in her headline, she put looking for a finance position in Houston. And so that was just really a great way for her to network, especially because she is, like I mentioned, coming out of state. I was like, wow, she really is interested in this specific location. She's not just applying to any location to see what she ends up getting. So those type of things are very important. Um, so make sure to include all your experience on there because a lot of recruiters just reach out directly to you as well. LinkedIn connections, you know, connect with career services or members from organizations you're in, professors, peers, you never know where you might come into contact with all of these people again, later down the line, maybe sooner than you think. There's so many different ways to come back into contact with people. So it's really important to connect. Um, a lot of people may share job opportunities and you might see it on you know, your main page that you never expected to. I also had somebody that we recently hired use LinkedIn as a really good way to network. He reached out to me directly on email because he had met one of our recruiters at a previous career fair. And then we set up a phone interview and then he moved on to interviewing with the team. And he actually looked on LinkedIn for members that were in that specific area or team and reached out and said, can I ask you a few questions and actually set up phone calls with two different people within that group just to learn more before his interview. So that is just such a good way to learn more about the company, really learn even if that's a place you want to be, the work that you want to do, and really use tools like this to your advantage. I mean, you can find out about the company beforehand, more about the job, and really come in there prepared. And then there are LinkedIn groups that you can utilize. Of course, if you're specifically interested in a company, you can follow it. You can uh, follow specific groups as well and find out different opportunities. So there are a lot of ways that you can use LinkedIn to help find a position. This kind of just compares the two. I think both are great. If I could recommend to you these resources, I'd recommend actually getting profiles on both. Um, you know, you can use Handshake for job searching. I would, and of course, you can use LinkedIn for the same. But I would say Handshake is, is very geared towards, towards college students. You know, you have career center resources there. You can find employers' contact information. So you can actually look at companies you're interested in and then follow up with the recruiter. Like I mentioned, how follow-up is very important. You know, recruiters like when you reach out to them. If you say, I saw this job posting on your website, I'm actually really interested in learning more. Can I send you my resume? That's really important, I would say. And you'll be able to instantly make that connection. LinkedIn, of course, start building that LinkedIn profile and network. You know, you'll be able to connect with all different peers and, and people on there, and then really also be able to look at different job opportunities as well. You can further research companies on there. I know it's very easily accessible to looking up different job positions, what they have available in specific areas too. So very great tools for you to use for both of them. And I would highly recommend starting to use both of them now if you're not already. Peers and professional organizations wanted to touch on this. 
on campus organizations are so important to network at. There's you know, often a lot of opportunities that companies come in and present at these. I know, of course, that right now no one's probably coming in to present, but reach out to your organization's presidents or whoever puts on those events and ask, you know, do you have any contacts that I can reach out to for these specific companies or, you know, what companies um, did come in present and, you know, what field were they in and really learning more and being able to be put into contact with, you know, industries that you're actually interested in and companies that you're interested in as well. And then peers, you know, asking peers about companies they've worked for, I think is really important. I have hired a intern that actually got into contact with somebody he knew from school and that's who put him in contact with me and, you know, he got hired from there. And so the same person that he knew that worked currently at Ryan has recommended, I mean, more than 10 people. And it's been really important because of course, if, you know, your peers are recommending you to the companies they work for, they obviously, you know, think that you would be a valuable contributor to the organization. And so I think that, you know, really having somebody recommend and refer you is important. You know, if that's actually a company or an industry you're you're interested in, then definitely reach out to peers that you know have worked there. And, you know, that can only benefit you. Or they can at least give you, you know, the contact information of their recruiter and, and put you into contact with them. So what does this all mean? It really is for you to use these networking tools to your benefit. You know, we have all of these tools that we might not use regularly because we're so used to going to career fairs and in-person events, but we really can network so much virtually just by sending those emails to people, messaging them on LinkedIn or Handshake, you know, connecting with people, you know, meeting friends of friends through one of these resources too, and going out of your comfort zone sometimes to say, can I set up a conversation with you about this company that you work for? I'm really interested. I've had people in the past that I didn't know that well ask me that, and I'm more than happy to tell them, you know, about my company, about my role, you know, and about opportunities as well. So I know that other people are more than happy to do that. So reach out to those contacts, use those tools and, you know, really get to networking.